Hello, my name is Joe, and what we're going to look at is how to create a master material and a material instance inside of Unreal Engine 5 for our simple scene. Um, so if it's helpful, please do like and subscribe as it helps me and uh, helps you as well. So what we'll do is inside of our uh, Unreal Engine scene here, um, we obviously previously we set up our folder structure, we saved our map and cleaned our map out with what we don't need currently. So what I've decided to do is rather than sort of I'm, I, I want to try and keep it interesting but not overwhelming because I didn't want to basically do stuff where we suddenly hit well I suddenly hit you with like blueprints and then material instances and then all this and then vertex painting it where it gets a bit overwhelming so what I decided to do is sort of try and create a create uh, these tutorials in such a way that it's sort of giving you bits of information as we go along and then we come back we'll you know we'll look at like a material instance and how it works and things like that why, why we use it and then we'll gradually keep coming back to them so i'm hoping that it gets stuck in your mind um because that's a similar way uh, to how i learn things is um you know i don't generally i don't read books and things like that i just try and do it in a logical way so i'm hoping that this is going to help you guys as well and um uh so what we'll do is we'll go to our materials folder so We'll click on our masters folder and we're going to right click material and we're going to name this M underscore master material. Now, what a master material is, is it's when we click on this, you'll see, um, as, sorry, as we go along, you'll see this is the material that controls other materials and you can put elements of it that you can expose um, a value. So you could say um, our color value. Um, exposes it to a material instance so that we can um, basically manipulate um, the color of an object very easily um, without having to create loads of different materials so we could essentially have a wooden floor for instance where we could then change the color of it and have 20 variations of the floor without having to have 20 unique textures um, and I think it's, it's very good because you can access um, access it via blueprints and all sorts so you can change colors um, of a building really easy when you're creating things like that but we're just going to look at a very simple way of um, simple um, master material here so I don't want to get you overwhelmed and we'll come back to this and gradually add to it so what we'll do is we'll double click on our material and you'll be brought to our material window here. So over the left here, you've got your um, what, what the material looks like. So you can move, you just click on it and drag. And you can move around here. You can change the shape of it. Sometimes this is useful for depending on the texture you've got. So you've got you know a flat one here, you've got a cube. Um, and this one you can preview a mesh um, that we've already got in there. So if this was like uh, a cat, you could preview the texture on the cat. But we're just going to stick with the circle one. Uh, down here is our details panel. Panel. So this is certain things here. We'll be dotting in and out of this. Not not too too much. You know, it's just uh, it's probably setting things like two sided materials and things like that as we go along. And transparency. And then this is our primary window here that we work in. And um, what what this is is like a, it's a node editor. Um, so when you drag stuff, well, I, I, I class it as a node editor. If you you know, so if we just. Uh, click that it's these little nodes and then you just drag off of the pin into a whatever we want it to do here um, we're just going to keep this very simple so what we're going to do is we're going to create a master material that has a color um, a roughness and a metallic now color is base color so this is where you would essentially plug your texture in um, or our color in this case and again don't worry about that too much because we will be adding to this and we will be doing this uh, metallic is how metal something is so if you, you know if you want it to look more like a steel or look less like a steel or whatever you, that's this is what the value control um, uh, here and roughness is how shiny something is so you know if you want it to be yeah, so how shiny something is. Another one um, we'll we look at, but this is further down the line, is our normal maps. Our normal maps basically sim, um, simulate, what's the best way of explaining it? So imagine like um, a plank of wood, and a wood's got loads of cuts in it and knots and things like that. What this does is this simulates those cuts and knots um, to make it almost look a bit 3D. Um, you'll find sometimes in computer games, if you go up to like very close to a brick wall, uh, as you walk towards a brick wall, it looks 3D, but if you get really close to it, it's actually flat. And this is what essentially a normal map is. Um, you can simulate that with things like displacement, but we might look at things like that later. Um, but that's another one we will be using, not for this part, because we don't have a normal map yet, and also ambient occlusion. And again, we'll come into that a bit later. 
Oh, and also um, emissive colour. So that is how, um, you know, imagine a lightsaber glow or something like that. So anyway, if we hold um, three on the keyboard and left click, this gives us a three constant. So if you notice it's one, two, three, so it's three values. And then what we'll do is we'll grab our pin and drag that into base color. Now, if we double click on that, you'll get your color um, sort of wheel here. So what we're gonna do is just to stop um, pain potentially down the line, is um, we're gonna set this value to just drag these two up so that we actually do have a color. Because sometimes you can be doing this and thinking, well, why is it not showing a color? Because you can do that. You can move your color here, move your wheel, but it's because this, this uh, value here is set to black, nothing's ever gonna happen. And it's the same vice versa. If we do that, set it to white, nothing's gonna ever happen. So we just wanna make sure these are all to the top there and then press okay. So um, what I'll do is just set that back to red so that we, uh, we're roughly the same, that'll do. And then what we'll do is we hold one on the keyboard and then we're gonna click twice so we get two. This is our one constant. And um, so we're going to plug that into metallic and that into roughness. So as you can see here, we've instantly got a shiny material and that is because of our roughness here. So zero is a value, um, it's a value of zero. It's um, basically as shiny as something can get. And so if we click on that and then go over to the left here and type in one, it will reprocess that and it's got no shininess. So then if we go to say 0.5, it's in between, it looks a bit more like, a, in a way, a leather, say a 0.2, got that, as you see there. So we'll just leave that for zero for a minute. And then if we click on the uh, metal, metal's the other way. If you want something to look more metal, it's a value of one. So then we do that, you can see here, it now looks a lot more like a metal. And then you can fiddle about with these to get sort of different sort of styles, so we can get a more, um, see if we can get a more of a hazy metal. So yeah, we can do that and then we can say, well, we want it to be, a bit more like a say a, a gold or a bronze or whatever we can do that so it's sort of playing about in here so yeah we'll leave that for that for a minute so that's a very simple way to create a material now what we can do is we just always remember to save so just click save um, depending on how much you content you've got in here um, and how much you've got going on that can take a while to save and we'll just uh, what we're gonna do is just close this for a minute so um, what we'll do is then go up to the create tab here and we'll go to shapes, and we're gonna put a cube in. And this should plonk your cube in your scene. So if we click on the cube and press F, that's gonna uh, focus our uh, cube here. So then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, I'm just gonna drag this over here and then hold Alt and drag and that duplicates. So then what we're just gonna do here, this is for the purposes of our material instances in a minute. So what we can do is we can drag our master material onto a cube. So you can see here that it's on the cube, um, doesn't look anything fancy because we haven't built lighting, things like that. So if we just go over here, go to our light source and just set this to, sorry, I'll just drag that up. So click on light source, set this to movable, and then go to our uh, sphere reflection captures. And, oh, sorry, what am I doing? Skylight, uh, where is it? Sorry, it's slightly different in, oh yeah, so skylight and then set that to movable. And um, so basically what that does is that means the, the lighting's happening in real time. We don't, you know, we wanna be working in real time temporarily. You know, we don't wanna look at baking because what you have to do is you have to put your lighting in and then build the lighting weight around, put your lighting in, build the lighting, things like that. So we see we've got our metal material here. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna have three variations of color. So obviously you could go right click, duplicate, put that on there. Then open up our material and we're gonna say, well, I want this to be a red color. Uh, save that material. Wait for it to save the project. And now we've got a red material. But what happens is this isn't potentially practical. Obviously when you've got color values like this, it's not, not, not so much of a big deal. But if you had say, like I said earlier, if you had 20 variations of wood floor, when it's not needed, it's just filling up dry, uh, disk space and memory space potentially and obviously can hit your performance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete this material that I've just created here. And we are gonna right click and create a material instance. So what we're gonna do is name this MI for material instance underscore, uh, we'll name this gold. And we're gonna click this and drag it into our materials folder over here. 
and we want to move it there. So what we can now do is drag that onto here. Now if we double click on this, you'll notice that we get a different view now. So if we just double click on this one here, which is the master material, this is what we were doing before. Now what a material instance is, is basically looking at our master material and is sort of looking for any values that we could potentially change on the fly, like color, things like that. Currently we haven't set anything up, so we're gonna look at that in a second. And this just makes things a lot more fluent. You make, make incredibly complicated um, master materials if you wanted that can do some amazing things. Um, we're just gonna say, we'll build up on our master material, but for this one, we're just gonna create something uh, simple. So as you can see here, we've got no, no real settings here that we can fiddle about with. So we'll go to our master material. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on this convert to parameter and we're going to give this a name so if you happen to click outside of that by accident you can click on parameter over here and we're going to name this color and then what we're going to do is we're going to click on this one we're going to convert that to a parameter and we're going to say what's this attached to um, metallic and then on this one convert to parameter roughness and then save so now when we go back what we will have when this is saved, go back to our material instances, is we've suddenly got these parameters here. So this now allows us to basically, we can enable the value, click on it, and we can now change the color here without having to go into uh, our master material. So what we're gonna quickly do is just tidy these into categories. So we'll go back to our master material, and what you can do is you've got a, um, a group which I believe is here and we'll just name it customize and then when we go to there drop down yeah there we go we've got customize so what this is going to do is this is going to put all of these when we press save under the same heading so you could have like um one for customizing the colors one for customizing the normal maps things like that um again we'll be uh going over that later so when we press save as you can see here we've got no change, it's absolutely fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this. Um, and we'll do that, duplicate. Um, out of principle, if we hit, if by the way, if you click on something, press F2, that allows you to rename some stuff quicker. Um, I'd prefer to do, uh, try and keep these sort of um, as neat as possible. Um, just, you know, so when you look at things, you can kind of understand what is going on. Um, so you can see underscore three so we've got one two three so what we're going to do is drag these material instances onto our meshes here so i'm just going to shift those over to the side there so now what we can do is when we go to our material instance is that i'm also going to create one to just hold alt here and i'm going to put the master material on there so that you can see that when we're editing a material instance that the master material never changes so go back to our material instances. so gold one you can name these whatever you want red blue so we just we just need them as they are for the minute so what we're going to do is i'm sorry i'm trying to keep this window so you can see both is that we're going to go to our color here so i'm just going to drag this out a bit you can just size all these here and so we want to make sure this is ticked double uh, click and we're going to change that to red and then we're going to save that and we're going to go to our next one and we're going to make this blue and we're going to change the metallic value to zero and we're going to make it really shiny and save and then we're going to go to this one and going to make this green we're going to make it very shiny and still very metally so you can see that our master material hasn't changed but the instances of the material have so this allows us to create loads of variations of materials very quickly and i believe it's a lot more efficient so if you're using um, tons of red cubes with the same material it's um obviously losing less memory and it means that we can go like that we can have you know you could have 50 of these in a scene and you think oh it's not quite the red right red i want um i want it a bit more brighter and you can see that it's changing everything in one go and uh, so you can see how practical these are for creating stuff and creating materials um Hopefully this has helped us again. Um, I thought I'd just do a little bit of an introduction here so that we're not constantly 
sort of say looking at an interface and looking at this we're actually doing stuff and also you don't get overwhelmed down the line again we will be popping back to this we will be going back into our material in uh, master material here and adding you know replacing this and adding um, textures in and things like that so that we can build up and up and up our master material as we go along so yeah hopefully this has helped um if it has great um if things could be better please let me know in the comments so that i could you know perhaps um know in the future of you know if this was a bit too long or not long enough and things like that so yeah cheers